Shalom, on to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekak Wadash, double honors to our elders and apostles of Great Millstone that taught us his truth. Peace, love, and salutations to the hopeful like Akim, teaching and preaching his truth with all righteousness and sincerity. This is Akim Wasat, and today's lesson is entitled, We Have to Turn Our Cheeks More in These Times. And Lord willing, you be edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai which are the true names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. And as always, the sit-downs, the lessons, the street speaking, is for the remnant, the elect, the Israel, the Most High, to use the gospel preach. So, hey, man, these times, which the scriptures call it perilous times, we have to be more in that attitude of, you know, making sure we're turning the cheek. You know, we're being slow to wrath because there's a lot of different things that's happening, you know, in this society. In regards to the economy and the financial stability with a lot of people, a lot of people is losing their jobs. A lot of people, you know, is feeling the strain from, um, you know, this current status of the economy. You know, everything is expensive. So there was a report that came out <clears throat> um, speaking about why are American drivers driving dangerous, more dangerously, in which we know. You don't know why, you know, all the different chemicals that's in the food, the different shots people took, you know, that's causing a hormonal imbalance and causing people to be more emotional, more raffle, which, you know, we know the global elites, this is their agenda. But we being men of the Lord, we have to understand that these times that we're in, you know, we got to, you know, apply more wisdom, more discretion and more wisdom as we're doing our affairs in Babylon the Great, which is America. I'm going to start off here in 2 Timothy, the third chapter of the Lord, willing to be edifying to the Lord's elect. It says this, know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous meaning dangerous times. And that's the time period that we're in now, man. It says, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. And you see a lot of this on social media, whether it's YouTube, TikTok, you know, <clears throat> Snapchat. And everybody has this. You know, energy where it's all about me. It's all about self. It says covetous. Covetous means you, you know, you, you're desiring something. You really want something. You hear the conversation of people chasing a bag and just want money, 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 gain, substance. Bolsters, people talking about what they have. Proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce despisers of those that are good. Trady, uh, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of the most high. The point is these different spirits is going to be in abundance in the last days and it's going to be on these people. This is what we're wrestling against. When the scriptures speak about enduring it to the end, you know, we have to not only endure pushing this truth and, you know, constantly being in the spirit and presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. And we got to endure all these spirits that's on these people. You know, as we're out and about doing our affairs in Babylon the Great, we have to be mindful that these people are overtaken by these evil spirits. And we, being members of the hopeful elect, we're not in a position of power where we can exact judgment. So, you know, a lot of things that happen to us, we have to turn our cheek and put it in the hands of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know, because as you um, turn to the Lord, man, the Heavenly Father, through His Son, Yahweh Shai, has given us this wisdom to navigate and to use as a light here in the land of darkness. So uh, we got to use more of these scriptures, you know, these scriptures even more in these times. Proverbs 15 and 1, a soft answer turned away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. So we have to apply this. You know, a lot of times, you know, certain situations can be quenched. If, you know, you respond in a certain way, you know, a soft answer turned away wrath. You know, a lot of these people, they, they're emotional, they're full of wrath, malice, evil spirits have overwhelmed these people. So, you know, when you're handling yourself in public settings, you know, sometimes a soft answer, hey, bro, it's cool, you know, hey, you know, I ain't tripping. You know, you even applying mercy even more in these times is going to be beneficial for you in these days. It says, but grievous words stir up anger. You don't want to be a hothead. You don't want to have a short temper. You don't want to be pushing a vibration of being soon angry. Because those that are soon angry dealeth foolishly. Let's look this up. This is uh, Proverbs 14, verse 7. He that is soon angry 
dealeth foolishly. So so angry meaning you short tempered, you got you a hot head. You know, anything can cause you to go off the handlebars, you know, jump off the porch. As Jake said in the world, you can't have that spirit and it's truth, man. Let these niggas that's in the world crash out and burn and have that spirit of being so angry because at the end of the day, they're going to deal foolishly. They're going to do something that's going to land them either in prison or getting shot and killed by the police. All right. He that is so angry deal it foolishly and a man of wicked devices is hated. Devices going into counsel, you know, wicked information. Things that lead you away from your whole boshi shot will be hated. All right. Uh, this is Titus 1 and 7. Now, this is an epistle that Apostle Paul wrote to Titus, which he was a spiritual son in the faith. And these epistles that Apostle Paul was writing to, whether it was Titus or Timothy, you know, it was for exhortation. You know, it was for, you know, assembling the churches, getting everything in order. So as Apostle Paul is writing these letters to Titus, he's telling him, hey, look, you know, certain men that you set up in a position of power well, in a position of leadership, they have to have these qualities about themselves. And we adapt these teachings that Apostle Paul gave to other members of the hopeful elect to us in these times. It says, for a bishop must be blameless as a steward of the most high a leader, not self-willed, not doing his own thing, not soon angry, not given to wine, meaning you're just this alcoholic, you know, you're just. You know, you constantly consume liquor. You know, ain't nothing wrong with, you know, having you a drink here and there. But, you know, make sure you do it in moderation. Be balanced with it. Not given to wine nor striker. Not given to filthy lucre. All right. Giving it to uh, gain money. You know, but the point is you can't be so angry as being a leader in this troop. You know. All right. Because a lot of people is going to. um get judged All right let's get this in proverbs and it's a lot of wisdom in the proverbs man that we have to you know at the end of the day it's about the testimony of the lord yahweh which is the spirit of prophecy and prophecy means you know, say before you know so we you know prophesy these things that will surely come to pass but as we're in this world there's a certain way we have to conduct ourselves you know but when you go here to uh, Proverbs chapter 21, let me see. Is it 21? Let me find this precept, Aki. It may be uh, the 20. Maybe the 22nd chapter of Proverbs. Twenty-two and three. Yeah. <clears throat> I actually start at the verse, first verse and read into the third verse. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. And us, man, it's truth and enduring into the end and believing in the testimony of Hawashah and keeping our faith, man, we will get a good name. And that's something that should be sought after rather than great riches, because we know that this world is going to soon pass away and everything in it. So if you labor for riches, man, it's not going to profit you in a day of judgment and loving favor rather than silver and gold. It's rather to be in the tender mercies of Yahweh Bashem Shai, being in the grace of Yahweh Bashem Shai, and having riches and substance. The rich and poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. Amen. It's going to the Lord. You know, if you're rich, the most high made you rich. If you're poor, the most high made you poor. Here's the point. Verse three, a prudent man foreseeth the evil. A prudent man, a prophet, a wise man, right? He foresee the evil, you know, and hey, we in a time of evils, man. Things is going to get worse. And hideth himself. So a wise man is going to do the particular things that he needs to avoid evil and we we do that by applying the scripts that's how you avoid evil man you know now evil i mean trials and tribulations will be presented to you as you are journeying journeying in this truth but as it is written many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivereth him out of them all so there's a deliverance for us 
when we go through particular things. But while we're going through particular things, we have to use prudence. We have to use, you know, the scriptures, you know, to guide us, you know, as far as our decision making. You know, ultimately, you pray for that. So a prudent man, for see if the evil, he can see the dangers and hide himself. He's going to do what he needs to do to avoid it. And by using and applying these scripts, that's how we can avoid certain situations. Like we were reading in Proverbs 15 and 3. You know, a soft answer turned the way. No, 15 and 1. A soft answer turned the way wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. It says, but the simple pass on and are punished. The simple, a person that's not in this truth, they're going to make light of it. They're not going to take it serious. They're going to go ahead and go on about their life as nothing, you know, can happen to them. And they're going to get destroyed. You know, let me get this over here. Going back to the title, we have to turn our cheek more in this society. <laughs> Meaning we can exact judgment, you know. We got to let stuff slide and give it and put it in the hands of the Heavenly Father. And the Heavenly Father will judge for us. <laughs> but I say in uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 39, it's our Lord, your house, I. Uh, speaking, let's actually start at the 38th verse. You have heard that it have been said, he's quoting in the scripts, chiefly the law, an eye for an eye and two for a two. You know, whatever somebody do to you, you do it to them. All right, but, you know, that's when we're in our in a position of power. We're not in a position of power. The heathen, which is ever reputed as being nothing, is, be, is lords over us. So, you know, we're not in a position where we can use our law, statutes, and commandments to bring judgment. But I say unto you, they, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy bright cheek, turn to him the other also. So in this society, you know, uh, when we get wrong, when we experience wrongdoing, you know, we can't stand up and judge. You know, we, gonna, we have to turn our cheek and you know, pray to the Lord that the Lord will handle it for us. You know, a lot of brothers deal with, you know, these women transgressing against us, you know, certain things happening at the job, you know, certain things happening to us out, out here on the highways and the byways, certain things that happen, you know, just while you out, you know, doing, doing your one and two in Babylon, you know, you can't be exact in judgment. Somebody do something, something to you, you know, um, and you got to turn around and get your lick back. You can't do that in this times, man. You know, case in point, yesterday when uh, we had came back from camp, which, you know, your car drove, it was his turn to drive. And I came back home <clears throat> and, you know, it was a two-third nigga leaning on my car. You know, leaning on the trunk of my car, talking to some girls. You know, now I could have, you know, been justified. Hey, man, get off my car. That's my That's my car right there. But understanding the times that we're in, and how these GMO niggas is so emotional and sensitive. You say anything to these guys, they can come out and do, you know, um, they can come out and do particular things, you know, so like it. You know, they can get emotional and they, a fight can come out of it. So, you know, I just gave it in the hands of the most high. And by the time I got came outside, they was gone, you know. So just avoiding situations will be beneficial for us. In these times, you know, tur turning the cheek. Because at the end of the day, we have a job to do. We got to push this truth, man. We can't be fighting these niggas and getting injured. And, you know what I'm saying? Potentially going to jail, getting tickets. You know, that can hinder you, hinder the ministry. Uh, Matthew 5 and 39. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, wrong is being done to you, turn to him the other also. You know, you got to take the low. Let me see if we can read this in another translation. And then we'll close out on that. Just a quick lesson. You know, sometimes we do the long lessons. Sometimes we do the quicker lessons. But uh, let's see. It's not giving me the option to uh, forward, reverse. Let me see. Tools. Yeah, we used to be able to look at it in the other translation. Close tools. Oh, you know what? We have to do it from here. KJV. Take the KJV. 
and then do the NLT. That. This is Matthew 5 and 39, but I say, do not resist an evil person. <laughs> you know, if someone slaps you on the right cheek, offer the other cheek also, which is, you know, just parabolically speaking about, you know, when wrongdoing is done to you. You know, you got to, you know, take the low. Now, you're not a punching bag. Somebody put their hands on you. You got to do what you got to do. But try to avoid these situations as much as you can, because that's the vibration our Lord Yahweh Shai dealt with while he was pushing the truth. All right. So apply this to your life. And it's to me first. The Lord willing, you know, it was edifying to the Lord's elect. I want to give all praises, glory and honor to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, and double honors to our elders and apostles of great millstone and tallest truth. Shalom, Akim. Stay strong.